Welcome back again. So we're going to talk a little bit more about the ADC. We're going to talk about if you have multiple readings you want to do. We're also going to touch on some of the details that we, we glossed over a little bit last time because I wanted to get to that example to show you how easy it was, but now I want to hit you with some of the details. Sorry, the details were still coming. So the details that I wanted to mention are in the open ADC function. That's about the only place where changes happen. I wanted to talk a little bit about how it's got three parameters. So a configuration one, a configuration two, and a port config. The thing I wanted to say is that if you look at these configuration parameters, we could go through and we could talk like in detail about, about what they do, um, but to be honest, we don't have to because they never really change. Um, so the only thing that I'll, I'll mention in here is there's some things about like how many bits you want, if you want interrupts or not. Um, this one is kind of neat. Um, this is what do you want 0 to be and what do you want 1023 to be. We're not going to do an example because most students don't need it, but you actually could make 0 some other number and you could make like a voltage divider circuit that made 0 like 2 volts and then uh, 1023 you can make a voltage divider circuit where 1023 was 3 volts and then that would really improve your resolution between those two extremes. If you do really need that like increased resolution, um, I'll say you know you can look in the data sheet and find some more information, um, or you can ask me and I'll give you the details. Typically though, we want to just use the reference of VDD and VSS uh, to be zero is zero, five volts is 1023, and that works out pretty well. The other thing I'll mention in here is you might have noticed that there's this ADC channel zero inside the open. Um, what that does is there's always got to be one channel selected as like the current channel. All it does is, is it sets the current channel uh, right here. So technically what we could have done, if we want to go back and look at our example again, our example here, um, we set the default to be channel zero. And last time we only ever used one. So it turns out that what we could have done is we could have just commented that line out because channel zero was the default it never changed so we actually would have been fine without that line of code uh, but it was good to show you that line because you do normally need it um, and we'll need it in this video lecture the other thing in here that I wanted to point out and really talk about is the port config so port config is this last bit and this one you will have to change so most of this you know it's always the same you don't even have to look at it um, the only thing that will ever change is this last thing. What it does is it sets how many pins are analog and how many pins are digital. So this is important so that you get only the ones that are analog that you want uh, and no more. The other thing I'll say is that what it does is it just sets a special function register directly. The special function register that it sets is ADCON1. So really this last thing is just setting ADCON1. So it's kind of easier just to look at um, the ADCON1 register. This table is very popular. There's a link to it on courseware. On courseware. We've used ADCON1 before, and the way we've used it before is right here. So before we've said things like um, ADCON1 uh, equals 0x0f, and the reason we did that it's because it set everybody as digital. So all, um, I guess it's actually 13, all 13 different analog inputs were not being used as analog, they were being used as digital. If you wanted to set them to all analog, uh, you could set uh, it to zero. If you want only a certain number, I don't know, oh say four, uh, if you wanted four, you would set it to this value right here, uh, which is B, right? So that's why our code, if you look at the comments, it says B right here, and that sets it to four analog pins. So if we go back to like a much earlier slide, um, if we set it to four right here, it makes these guys all analog, um, but then these guys are digital, um, and these guys are also digital. One annoying thing about um, ADCON1 is that 
if you want, let's say you wanted analog channel 12 to be analog, this is a pain. If you wanted this one to be analog, you have to set the other 12 to also be analog. This is why we say if you want one, put it on RA0. If you want two, use RA0 and RA1, right? Don't just arbitrarily put an analog over on RB0 because then you'll have to make the others analog. So pretty easy detail, but now you know it. In general, in this class, we want you to set only as many analog as you need. So really a better way to have done the example um, would be to say, hey, we only need one. Let's only set it to one. That would have been E. So really, if we want to keep making this example that we did last time better, um, I would have set it instead of B, I would have set it to E, and I would have made my comment one analog input pin. So that last one is important, um, but for the green board, it's going to usually be four, and that would work out great. So those are kind of the details. Um, and just to kind of reiterate, um, the only things that will change are port config here. Uh, these guys will always stay the same. Likewise, on this chunk, you'll just repeat this chunk if you want to do multiples, which we'll do here in a little bit. The only thing that ever changes on it is which channel you're setting um, and you know where you save the result to. These other things, they just kind of don't ever change. So this is what makes ADC so easy is that there's so little that actually changes. Most of it's just kind of boilerplate stuff that you copy paste. So let's go ahead and update our example. Um, so I've kind of changed it for one, now we're going to change it back. Um, what I want it to do is I want it to do four analog readings. So if we want four analog readings, uh, we're going to make some more variables. So I'm going to make, instead of just RA0, uh, I'm going to make four of them. So we'll get RA1, RA2, RA3. You can choose any name you like for the variables. I just kind of like these names, um, casing however you would like. And so what we want to do is we want to specifically say um, that we want to put it right back, right? So four analog pins. Hey, guess what? I don't even need to look at that table. I know that if I want four, uh, that's a B. You could also write it in binary, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's just that I, I like to try to stick with hex all the time. Binary totally works, right? Like that would, that would definitely run, um, except for I wouldn't be able to handle it because I like hex better. Um, next thing we want to do is we want to put back on the setting of the channel because we're actually going to do four readings that are all kind of the same. So I'm just going to kind of paste this four times and then I'll come in and I'll change what needs to be changed. Um, I'm going to separate them a little because they're hurting my eyes. So first we're going to get zero and then after that we're going to get number one. So I just change it in those two places. And then two, save it to RA2 value, set the channel to three, and save that into RA3 value. And then with printing we'll just go ahead and I'll just modify this guy. You can comment it out if you want to save the old version, but I, I'm not going to bother. And I'm going to print something on line one and then something on line two. So I'm going to change my code for line one and line two. What I'd like to print out is I'd like to print out um, RA0 and RA1 on the first line, and then RA2 and RA3 on the second line. And the way that I'm going to choose to print them is I'm just going to say like one colon and then two colon, actually I should say zero colon, one colon. So that's going to be my style. Instead of saying two and three though, I'm going to be fancy um, and I'm going to put the letter H, which we'll explain later, and then the letter B. So I've got four readings, um, you know, one, two, three, and four. I said that I've got four analog pins, and then I'm really just displaying all four, two on line one, and then two on line two. So all right, I'm ready to give this thing a whirl. So let it go ahead and build and run. And what I should be able to do here is I should be able to see um, RA0 changing. So I'll take it all the way counterclockwise, which is 1023. 
uh, all the way down to zero. If I skip to the next one over, I can take it uh, counterclockwise up to uh, 1023, except for it didn't print the three. All right, I gotta fix that. So too many spaces. Looks like I had a leading space that I did not Im intend. So that problem is now fixed. Uh, so now I can take it all the way up to 1023 and it prints it. The other analog input is far more fun, uh, and that's the joystick. So the joystick, um, if you look at the horizontal, you can see if I push it to the left, the horizontal goes to zero. And if I push it to the right, it goes up to 1023. With the vertical, if I take it down, it goes to zero. Um, and if I push it all the way up, it goes to 1023. So it's really kind of neat. This is all that goes into a, <laughs> a joystick control, right? It's just got two analog readings, um, and that's really all it is. And then whenever you let go, it snaps back to roughly the middle, so around 512. I knew that the joystick was connected to those locations, so I knew it was RA2 and RA3 for the joystick. And it's something that you can use in a lot of interesting ways, uh, so I really like it. Okay, that's really all there is to the ADC, right? I mean, we've shown you multiple channels, we've shown you single channels, very easy to work with. It just lets you get a numeric value uh, to express anything over the range of zero to five. All right, see you next time, bye.